And every decision you make is something that will shift the trajectory of a child. And not just that child, but the next generation. I think there's been a lot of examples of effective juvenile court judges over the years who, within the bounds of judicial ethics, are also leaders in the child welfare community and um, helping to bring services and a um, common set of principles and goals. Judges have a responsibility to be engaged in, the, in not just, when I say community, I'm not talking about uh, when it's time to be elected, if they're elected, um, going to area churches and community centers, but truly engaged in the faith-based community, service providers, um, the education community, everyone, because we're responsible for ensuring uh, not just the protection of children under our, our jurisdiction, but their needs, their educational needs, their mental health needs, their medical care needs. Every child who falls under my court's jurisdiction, I'm ultimately responsible for. I'm responsible for their well-being, and much like I would for my own child, uh, I want to know what resources are available. It's sort of the responsibility of the court, the judicial system, the court, along with human services, children, youth, and families to kind of get out there and sort of rally people around in different communities, different neighborhoods. How can you help these families? What are the resources there? It's an issue when a child is removed for poverty purposes. Because a parent cannot just come up out of poverty overnight. But the majority of removals are because of something that is a financial hurdle or, or, or poverty type problem. So you're asking this person to come up out of a situation that may be generational and you're not assisting them in coming out of this situation. So you're holding them in poverty and then holding them guilty for being poor and then penalizing them by removing their children because they're poor. And that's unfair. And then you're asking them to parenting classes go get a psyche valve, drug tests, drug counseling. If you got a service every day for five days a week, at what point do you get to go to work? I have a school of thought where you have to survey the people and ask them what their needs are. Uh, we simply cannot prescribe for people what we believe they need. Being able to meet with the families beforehand to really explain what's going to happen in the court hearing, what they can expect, what kind of hearing it is, um, and then being able to have um, some kind of support after the hearing, whether a ruling was made or a change of placement was made, being able to speak through it with the families and the young people to make sure that they're supported and heard through the process. A judge really needs to be active and working with all of the providers and partners in his or her community to make sure that there are adequate, an adequate number of foster homes or kinship care uh, placements so that there are other alternatives than congregate care. Of course, the best thing is not to remove children at all. Um, and so judges need to really work in their community to have services available that can keep children in their homes safely so that removal happens in very few cases. And in those cases, then children go into a family setting, either kinship care or foster care. I mentioned the resource guidelines of the National Council of Juvenile Family Court Judges, uh, and now the enhanced resource guidelines. Uh, one of the things that they really emphasize for juvenile court judges is that Juvenile court, in some ways, is the original problem-solving court in that uh, the judge really has a um, the authority, responsibility, and important for judges sort of the ethical um, permission to be a leader in the child welfare community, welfare community. Um, and, uh, and to encourage collaboration within 
the overall legal system. My vision would be more concrete issue support. So more support addressing issues like poverty, housing, food shortage, or, or food worries, um, uh, school supplies and school issues. If you address those tiny things or those, 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 those issues, those concrete issues that really keep a parent up at night, those other issues just fall right off.